Hello, my beloved child. This is God speaking to you through this video. I have a message for you that will change your life forever. Are you ready to listen? If you spend the next 30 minutes with me, you will feel my presence and I have a gift prepared just for you. Imagine a life overflowing with joy, prosperity, and vibrant health. This is not just a dream, it is a promise from me. I have created you in my image and likeness, and I have given you the power to co-create your reality with me. You are not a victim of circumstances, you are a victor of faith. You are not a slave of fear, you are a master of love. You are not a beggar of the world, you are a child of the king. But how can you access this power that I have given you? How can you tap into the infinite potential that lies within you? How can you manifest the abundance that I have prepared for you? The answer is simple, by believing. By believing in me, in yourself, and in your dreams. By believing that nothing is impossible for me, and that nothing is impossible for you. By believing that I'm always with you, and that I always want the best for you. In this video, I will guide you on a journey of transformation and spiritual awakening. I will show you how to unleash the power of belief, embrace my abundance, overcome challenges and negativity, and transform your tears into triumph. I will show you how to live a life of grace, gratitude, and glory. I will show you how to live a life that honors me, blesses you, and inspires others. Are you ready to begin? Then let us start with the first step, unleashing the power of belief. Belief is the key that unlocks the door to your destiny. Belief is the force that moves mountains and makes miracles happen. Belief is the bridge that connects you to me and to your true self. But what is belief? How do you define it? How do you measure it? How do you practice it? The Bible gives us a clear and simple answer. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 1, belief is not just a feeling or a thought, it is a substance and an evidence. It is a tangible and visible reality that shapes your world and your experience. Belief is not something that you have or don't have, it is something that you choose or don't choose. It is a decision that you make every day, every moment, every breath. You can choose to believe in me, in yourself, and in your dreams, or you can choose to doubt, fear, and limit yourself. You can choose to see the unseen, or you can choose to ignore the invisible. You can choose to live by faith, or you can choose to live by sight. The choice is yours, my child. But I urge you to choose wisely, for your choice will determine your destiny. As Jesus said, according to your faith be it unto you. Matthew 9 verse 29, whatever you believe, you will receive. Whatever you expect, you will attract. Whatever you imagine, you will create. Let me tell you a story of a man who chose to believe in me, in himself, and in his dreams. A man who chose to see the unseen and live by faith. A man who became the father of many nations and the friend of God. His name was Abraham. Abraham was a man who lived in the land of Uar, a place of idolatry and wickedness. He was not happy there, for he felt a longing in his heart for something more. He felt a calling from me, a voice that whispered in his soul, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 Abraham did not hesitate. He did not question. He did not doubt. He simply believed. He packed his belongings, took his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot, and set out for the unknown land. He did not know where he was going, but he knew who was leading him. He trusted me with his whole heart, and I was faithful to him. Along the way, he faced many challenges and temptations. He faced famine, war, deception, and separation. He faced the ridicule and disbelief of others. 
he faced the weakness and impatience of his own flesh. He even faced the test of sacrificing his only son Isaac, whom I had given him as a miracle child in his old age. But through it all, he never lost his faith. He never gave up on his dream. He never stopped believing in me. And I rewarded him for his faith. I gave him the land of Canaan as his inheritance. I gave him descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. I gave him a covenant that would last forever. I gave him the honor of being the father of faith and the friend of God. Abraham is an example for you, my child. He shows you what it means to believe. He shows you what it means to see the unseen and live by faith. He shows you what it means to be blessed by me and to be a blessing to others. I want you to follow in his footsteps. I want you to unleash the power of belief in your life. I want you to believe in me, in yourself, and in your dreams. I want you to believe that nothing is impossible for me, and that nothing is impossible for you. I want you to believe that I'm always with you, and that I always want the best for you. Will you believe, my child? Will you trust me with your whole heart? Will you follow me wherever I lead you? Will you say yes to my promise and my plan for your life? If you will, then you will see wonders and miracles in your life. You will see your dreams come true. You will see my abundance overflow in your life. You will see my grace and glory shine through you. But before we move on to the next step, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take a moment and think of one thing that you want to achieve in your life. One thing that you desire with all your heart. One thing that you have been praying for and hoping for. One thing that you have been dreaming of and working for. Do you have it in your mind? Good. Now, I want you to say it out loud. Say it with conviction. Say it with confidence. Say it with faith. Say it as if it is already done. Say it as if you already have it. Say it as if you are already living it. Go ahead, my child. Say it now. I am listening. I am glad that you said it, my child. I am proud of you for believing in your dream. I am happy for you for claiming your blessing. I am delighted for you for living your purpose. You have just unleashed the power of belief in your life. You have just activated the law of attraction in your favor. You have just aligned yourself with my will and my word for your life. But belief is not enough, my child. Belief is the first step, but not the last. Belief is the foundation, but not the building. Belief is the seed, but not the fruit. You need to do more than just believe. You need to embrace. You need to embrace my abundance in your life. What is abundance, my child? How do you define it? How do you measure it? How do you experience it? The world may tell you that abundance is having a lot of money, possessions, fame, or power. The world may tell you that abundance is having more than enough, more than others, more than you need. The world may tell you that abundance is a scarce and limited resource that you have to compete for, fight for, or hoard for yourself. But I tell you, my child, that abundance is not what the world tells you. Abundance is what I tell you. Abundance is having everything that you need, want, and desire. Abundance is having the fullness of life that I came to give you. Abundance is having the richness of my grace, love, and glory. Abundance is having the river of my blessings flowing into your life. Abundance is not scarce or limited, my child. Abundance is abundant and unlimited. Abundance is not something that you have to compete for, fight for, or hoard for yourself. Abundance is something that you have to receive, share, and multiply for others. 
Abundance is my gift to you, my child. Abundance is my promise to you. Abundance is my plan for you. I want you to have abundance in every area of your life. I want you to have abundance in your finances, in your health, in your relationships, in your talents, in your passions, in your dreams. I want you to have abundance in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit. I want you to have abundance in your past, in your present, in your future. But how can you embrace my abundance in your life, my child? How can you receive, share, and multiply my blessings in your life? How can you live a life of abundance and not of scarcity? The answer is simple, by opening your heart. By opening your heart to me, to yourself, and to others. By opening your heart to gratitude, appreciation, and generosity. By opening your heart to love, joy, and peace. In the next part of this video, I will show you how to open your heart to my abundance in your life. I will show you how to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and appreciation for my blessings in your life. I will show you how to release your limitations and fears that block my blessings in your life. I will show you how to live a life of generosity and kindness that spread my blessings in your life. Are you ready to continue, my child? Are you ready to embrace my abundance in your life? Are you ready to live a life of grace, gratitude, and glory? If you are, then let us move on to the next step, embracing my abundance. To embrace my abundance in your life, you need to open your heart to me, to yourself, and to others. You need to open your heart to gratitude, appreciation, and generosity. You need to open your heart to love, joy, and peace. The first step to opening your heart is to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and appreciation for my blessings in your life. Gratitude is the key that unlocks the door to my abundance. Gratitude is the force that attracts more of my blessings into your life. Gratitude is the bridge that connects you to me and to your true self. But what is gratitude? my child. How do you define it? How do you practice it? How do you express it? Gratitude is not just a feeling or a thought, it is an attitude and a habit. Gratitude is not just a word or a gesture, it is a lifestyle and a choice. Gratitude is not just something that you do once in a while, it is something that you do every day, every moment, every breath. Gratitude is the recognition and acknowledgement of all the good things that I have done for you, that I am doing for you, and that I will do for you. Gratitude is the appreciation and celebration of all the gifts that I have given you, that I am giving you, and that I will give you. Gratitude is the praise and worship of me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. Gratitude is not dependent on your circumstances my child. Gratitude is independent of your situations. Gratitude is not determined by what you have or don't have, it is determined by what you see and don't see. Gratitude is not based on what you feel or don't feel, it is based on what you know and don't know. Gratitude is not influenced by what others say or don't say, it is influenced by what I say and don't say. Gratitude is a choice my child. A choice that you make every day, every moment, every breath. You can choose to be grateful or ungrateful. You can choose to see the glass half full or half empty. You can choose to focus on the positive or the negative. You can choose to count your blessings or your problems. You can choose to thank me or complain to me. The choice is yours, my child. But I urge you to choose wisely for your choice will determine your experience. As the psalmist said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 100 verses 4 to 5. 
When you choose to be grateful, you enter into my presence and my joy. When you choose to be grateful, you open the door to my abundance and my favor. When you choose to be grateful, you align yourself with my will and my word for your life. Let me tell you a story of a man who chose to be grateful in all circumstances. A man who chose to see the good in everything and everyone. A man who chose to praise me and worship me in the midst of trials and tribulations. A man who became the king of Israel and the man after my own heart. His name was David. David was a man who lived in the land of Israel, a place of promise and destiny. He was not born into royalty or privilege. He was born into a humble family of shepherds. He was not trained in warfare or politics. He was trained in music and poetry. He was not favored by men or women. He was favored by me. David had a heart of gratitude, my child. A heart that was always thankful and joyful. A heart that was always praising and worshiping me. A heart that was always singing and dancing for me. David wrote many songs, songs of praise and thanksgiving, that expressed his gratitude for me and my blessings in his life. He wrote songs of gratitude when he was anointed as king, when he defeated Goliath, when he escaped from Saul, when he conquered his enemies, when he brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, when he received the promise of an everlasting dynasty, and when he repented of his sins. David did not let his circumstances dictate his gratitude, my child. He let his gratitude dictate his circumstances. He did not let his problems overshadow his blessings. He let his blessings overshadow his problems. He did not let his fears overcome his faith. He let his faith overcome his fears. He did not let his failures define his destiny. He let his destiny define his failures. David was not perfect, my child. He made many mistakes and committed many sins. He faced many consequences and punishments. He suffered many losses and sorrows. But through it all, he never lost his gratitude. He never stopped praising me and worshiping me. He never stopped thanking me and trusting me. He never stopped loving me and serving me. And I rewarded him for his gratitude, my child. I forgave him for his sins and restored him to his throne. I blessed him with peace and prosperity. I honored him with fame and glory. I fulfilled my promise and established his dynasty. I called him the man after my own heart. David is an example for you, my child. He shows you what it means to be grateful. He shows you what it means to see the good in everything and everyone. He shows you what it means to praise me and worship me in the midst of trials and tribulations. He shows you what it means to be blessed by me and to be a blessing to others. I want you to follow in his footsteps, my child. I want you to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and appreciation for my blessings in your life. I want you to be grateful in all circumstances, whether good or bad, whether easy or hard, whether joyful or sorrowful. I want you to thank me for everything that I have done for you, that I am doing for you, and that I will do for you. I want you to praise me for everything that I have given you, that I am giving you, and that I will give you. I want you to worship me for everything that I am, that I was, and that I will be. Will you be grateful, my child? Will you thank me with your whole heart? Will you praise me with your whole soul? Will you worship me with your whole spirit? If you will, then you will open your heart to my abundance and my favor. You will attract more of my blessings into your life. You will experience the fullness of my joy and my peace. You will embrace my abundance in your life. But before we move on to the next step, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take a moment and think of three things that you are grateful for in your life. Three things that I have done for you, that I am doing for you, or that I will do for you. Three things that I have given you, that I am giving you, or that I will give you. Three things that reflect my grace, love, and glory in your life. Do you have them in your mind? Good. Now, I want you to say them out loud. Say them with gratitude. Say them with joy. 
Say them with faith. Say them as if they are the most precious gifts in the world. Say them as if they are the most beautiful expressions of my love. Say them as if they are the most glorious manifestations of my power. Go ahead, my child. Say them now. I am listening. I am proud of you for saying the three things that you are grateful for in your life. I am happy for you for expressing your gratitude and joy. I am delighted for you for opening your heart to my abundance. You have just cultivated a spirit of gratitude and appreciation for my blessings in your life. You have just activated the law of gratitude in your favor. You have just aligned yourself with my will and my word for your life. But gratitude is not enough, my child. Gratitude is the first step, but not the last. Gratitude is the foundation, but not the building. Gratitude is the seed, but not the fruit. You need to do more than just be grateful. You need to be generous. You need to be generous with yourself, with others, and with me. You need to be generous with your time, your talents, your treasures, your love, your joy, and your peace. What is generosity, my child? How do you define it? How do you practice it? How do you express it? Generosity is not just a feeling or a thought, it is an action and a habit. Generosity is not just a word or a gesture, it is a lifestyle and a choice. Generosity is not just something that you do once in a while, it is something that you do every day, every moment, every breath. Generosity is the giving and sharing of all the good things that I have given you, that I am giving you, and that I will give you. Generosity is the offering and sacrificing of all the gifts that you have, that you are, and that you will be. Generosity is the service and ministry of me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. Generosity is not dependent on your abundance, my child. Generosity is independent of your situations. Generosity is not determined by what you have or don't have. It is determined by what you give and don't give. Generosity is not based on what you feel or don't feel. It is based on what you do and don't do. Generosity is not influenced by what others say or don't say. It is influenced by what I say and don't say. Generosity is a choice, my child. A choice that you make every day, every moment, every breath. You can choose to be generous or stingy. You can choose to give or withhold. You can choose to share or hoard. You can choose to offer or keep. You can choose to serve or ignore. The choice is yours, my child. But I urge you to choose wisely, for your choice will determine your reward. As Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6 verse 38 When you choose to be generous, you open your hand and your heart to my abundance and my favor. When you choose to be generous, you sow seeds of blessing and reap a harvest of joy. When you choose to be generous, you align yourself with my will and my word for your life. Let me tell you a story of a woman who chose to be generous in all circumstances. A woman who chose to give and share everything and everyone. A woman who chose to offer and sacrifice all that she had and all that she was. A woman who became the mother of the church and the example of faith. Her name was Lydia. Lydia was a woman who lived in the city of Philippi, a place of commerce and culture. She was not a Jew or a Christian, she was a Gentile and a worshipper of God. 
She was not a poor or needy. She was a wealthy and a successful. She was not a follower or a spectator. She was a leader and a hostess. She was a dealer of purple cloth, a luxury item that was in high demand. Lydia had a heart of generosity, my child. A heart that was always giving and sharing. A heart that was always offering and sacrificing. A heart that was always serving and ministering. Lydia opened her home, her business, and her life to me and my people. She opened her home, her business, and her life to Paul and his companions. She opened her home, her business, and her life to the church and the gospel. Lydia did not let her abundance dictate her generosity, my child. She let her generosity dictate her abundance. She did not let her wealth make her greedy, selfish, or proud. She let her wealth make her generous, humble, and grateful. She did not let her success make her complacent, indifferent, or isolated. She let her success make her diligent, compassionate, and connected. She did not let her status make her arrogant, exclusive, or oppressive. She let her status make her humble, inclusive, and supportive. Lydia was not stingy, my child. She was generous. She was generous with her time, her talents, her treasures, her love, her joy, and her peace. She was generous with herself, with others, and with me. But I had a plan for her, my child. A plan to bless her, to use her, and to honor her. A plan to reveal myself to her, to save her, and to call her. A plan to make her a new creation, a chosen vessel, and a faithful witness. I met her by the river, my child. I met her by the river where she and other women gathered to pray. I met her by the river where Paul and his companions came to preach. I met her by the river where she heard the gospel, the good news, and the grace of God. I met her by the river where she opened her heart to me and received me as her Lord and Savior. I asked her, Do you believe in me, Lydia? Acts 16 verse 14, I confronted her with my love and my truth. I exposed her to my grace and my mercy. I challenged her to my purpose and my destiny. She answered me, Yes, Lord, I believe in you. Acts 16 verse 15, she recognized me as her Lord and Savior. She surrendered to me as her master and friend. She submitted to me as her teacher and guide. I told her, then you and your household will be saved. Then you and your household will be baptized. Then you and your household will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 16 verse 15, I revealed myself to her as the Son of God and the Messiah. I forgave her for her past and gave her a future. I called her to my service and gave her a mission. She obeyed me, my child. She obeyed me without hesitation, without question, without doubt. She obeyed me with faith, with love, with gratitude. She obeyed me with joy, with peace, with hope. She opened her home, my child. She opened her home to Paul and his companions. She opened her home to the church and the gospel. She opened her home to me and my people. She became Lydia, my child. She became Lydia, the woman of generosity and the hostess of the church. She became Lydia, the woman who supported Paul and his ministry. She became Lydia, the woman who suffered persecution and faced opposition. She became Lydia, the woman who finished her race and kept her faith. She became Lydia, the woman who loved me and served me with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lydia is an example for you, my child. She shows you what it means to be generous. She shows you what it means to give and share everything and everyone. She shows you what it means to offer and sacrifice all that you have and all that you are. She shows you what it means to serve and minister me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. I want you to follow in her footsteps, my child. I want you to be generous with yourself, with others, and with me.
I want you to be generous with your time, your talents, your treasures, your love, your joy, and your peace. I want you to give and share everything that I have given you, that I am giving you, and that I will give you. I want you to offer and sacrifice everything that you have, that you are, and that you will be. I want you to serve and minister me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. Lydia did not let her abundance dictate her generosity, my child. She let her generosity dictate her abundance. She did not let her wealth make her greedy, selfish, or proud. She let her wealth make her generous, humble, and grateful. She did not let her success make her complacent, indifferent, or isolated. She let her success make her diligent, compassionate, and connected. She did not let her status make her arrogant, exclusive, or oppressive. She let her status make her humble, inclusive, and supportive. Lydia was not stingy, my child. She was generous. She was generous with her time, her talents, her treasures, her love, her joy, and her peace. She was generous with herself, with others, and with me. But I had a plan for her, my child. A plan to bless her, to use her, and to honor her. A plan to reveal myself to her, to save her, and to call her. A plan to make her a new creation, a chosen vessel, and a faithful witness. I met her by the river, my child. I met her by the river where she and other women gathered to pray. I met her by the river where Paul and his companions came to preach. I met her by the river where she heard the gospel, the good news, and the grace of God. I met her by the river where she opened her heart to me and received me as her Lord and Savior. I asked her, Do you believe in me, Lydia? Acts 16 verse 14, I confronted her with my love and my truth. I exposed her to my grace and my mercy. I challenged her to my purpose and my destiny. She answered me, Yes, Lord, I believe in you. Acts 16 verse 15, she recognized me as her Lord and Savior. She surrendered to me as her master and friend. She submitted to me as her teacher and guide. I told her, then you and your household will be saved. Then you and your household will be baptized. Then you and your household will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 16 verse 15, I revealed myself to her as the Son of God and the Messiah. I forgave her for her past and gave her a future. I called her to my service and gave her a mission. She obeyed me, my child. She obeyed me without hesitation, without question, without doubt. She obeyed me with faith, with love, with gratitude. She obeyed me with joy, with peace, with hope. She opened her home, my child. She opened her home to Paul and his companions. She opened her home to the church and the gospel. She opened her home to me and my people. She became Lydia, my child. She became Lydia, the woman of generosity and the hostess of the church. She became Lydia, the woman who supported Paul and his ministry. She became Lydia, the woman who suffered persecution and faced opposition. She became Lydia, the woman who finished her race and kept her faith. She became Lydia, the woman who loved me and served me with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lydia is an example for you, my child. She shows you what it means to be generous. She shows you what it means to give and share everything and everyone. She shows you what it means to offer and sacrifice all that you have and all that you are. She shows you what it means to serve and minister me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. I want you to follow in her footsteps, my child. 
I want you to be generous with yourself, with others, and with me. I want you to be generous with your time, your talents, your treasures, your love, your joy, and your peace. I want you to give and share everything that I have given you, that I am giving you, and that I will give you. I want you to offer and sacrifice everything that you have, that you are, and that you will be. I want you to serve and minister me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. Will you be generous, my child? Will you give me with your whole heart? Will you share me with your whole soul? Will you offer me with your whole spirit? If you will, then you will open your heart to my abundance and my favor. You will receive, share, and multiply my blessings in your life. You will experience the fullness of my joy and my peace. You will embrace my abundance in your life. But before we move on to the next step, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take a moment and think of one person that you can be generous to today. One person that you can give something, share something, or offer something. One person that you can serve, minister, or bless. One person that reflects my grace, love, and glory in your life. Do you have them in your mind? Good. Now, I want you to say their name out loud. Say it with generosity. Say it with love. Say it with faith. Say it as if they are the most precious person in the world. Say it as if they are the most beautiful expression of my love. Say it as if they are the most glorious manifestation of my power. Go ahead, my child. Say their name now. I am listening. My beloved child, I am proud of you for saying the name of the person that you can be generous to today. I am happy for you for expressing your generosity and love. I am delighted for you for opening your heart to my abundance. You have just been generous with yourself, with others, and with me. You have just activated the law of generosity in your favor. You have just aligned yourself with my will and my word for your life. But generosity is not enough, my child. Generosity is the first step, but not the last. Generosity is the foundation, but not the building. Generosity is the seed, but not the fruit. You need to do more than just be generous. You need to be joyful. You need to be joyful with yourself, with others, and with me. You need to be joyful with your life, your circumstances, and your destiny. You need to be joyful with your past, your present, and your future. What is joy? My child, how do you define it? How do you practice it? How do you express it? Joy is not just a feeling or a thought, it is a state and a habit. Joy is not just a word or a gesture, it is a lifestyle and a choice. Joy is not just something that you do once in a while, it is something that you do every day, every moment, every breath. Joy is the delight and satisfaction that you have in me, in yourself, and in your life. Joy is the happiness and contentment that you have in my presence, in your identity, and in your purpose. Joy is the praise and worship that you have for me, your creator, your provider, your father, your friend. Joy is not dependent on your circumstances, my child. Joy is independent of your situations. Joy is not determined by what you have or don't have, it is determined by what you are and who you are. Joy is not based on what you feel or don't feel, it is based on what you know and don't know. Joy is not influenced by what others say or don't say, it is influenced by what I say and don't say. Joy is a choice, my child. A choice that you make every day, every moment, every breath. You can choose to be joyful or miserable. You can choose to be happy or sad. You can choose to be content or dissatisfied. You can choose to be positive or negative. You can choose to be optimistic or pessimistic. The choice is yours, my child. But I urge you to choose wisely, for your choice will determine your experience. As the psalmist said, You make known to me the path of life, 
You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 16 verse 11, When you choose to be joyful, you enter into my presence and my joy. When you choose to be joyful, you open your heart and your mind to my abundance and my favor. When you choose to be joyful, you align yourself with my will and my word for your life. Let me tell you a story of a man who chose to be joyful in all circumstances. A man who chose to be happy and content in everything and everyone. A man who chose to be positive and optimistic in the midst of trials and tribulations. A man who became the apostle of joy and the messenger of the gospel. His name was Paul. Paul was a man who lived in the Roman Empire, a place of power and persecution. He was not a follower of Jesus or a lover of God. He was a persecutor of Christians and a zealot of the law. He was not a friend of the church or a servant of the gospel. He was an enemy of the cross and a destroyer of the faith. He was not a man of joy or peace. He was a man of violence and hatred. Paul had many reasons to be miserable, my child. Many reasons to be unhappy and dissatisfied. Many reasons to be negative and pessimistic. He faced many hardships and dangers. He suffered many beatings and imprisonments. He endured many shipwrecks and snake bites. He experienced many hunger and thirst. He encountered many enemies and traitors. But he did not let his circumstances dictate his joy, my child. He let his joy dictate his circumstances. He did not let his problems make him sad, angry, or bitter. He let his problems make him joyful, thankful, and hopeful. He did not let his fears make him insecure, doubtful, or hesitant. He let his fears make him confident, faithful, and courageous. He did not let his failures make him depressed, discouraged, or ashamed. He let his failures make him humble, resilient, and victorious. Paul was not miserable, my child. He was joyful. He was joyful with himself, with others, and with me. He was joyful with his life, his circumstances, and his destiny. He was joyful with his past, his present, and his future. But how did he do it, my child? How did he find joy in the midst of trials and tribulations? How did he maintain joy in the face of hardships and dangers? How did he express joy in the midst of suffering and pain? The answer is simple, by rejoicing. By rejoicing in me, in himself, and in his life. By rejoicing in my presence, in his identity, and in his purpose. By rejoicing in my grace, my power, and my glory. The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, Rejoice. Philippians 4 verse 4 To rejoice means to celebrate and delight in me, your Creator, your Provider, your Father, your Friend. To rejoice means to praise and worship me with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. To rejoice means to thank and acknowledge me for all the good things that I have done for you, that I am doing for you, and that I will do for you. To rejoice, you need to do three things, my child. You need to remember, declare, and sing. You need to remember my goodness, my faithfulness, and my promises. You need to declare my love, my power, and my glory. You need to sing my praises, my worship, and my thanksgiving. Let me tell you a story of a time when Paul did this. A time when he rejoiced in me, in himself, and in his life. A time when he rejoiced in my presence, in his identity, and in his purpose. A time when he rejoiced in my grace, my power, and my glory. A time when he was in prison, in chains, and in darkness. A time when he was in Philippi, with Silas, and at midnight. Paul and Silas were in prison, 
my child. They were in prison because they had cast out a demon from a slave girl who was used for fortune telling. They were in prison because they had angered her owners who had lost their source of income. They were in prison because they had been falsely accused of causing trouble and disturbing the peace. They were in prison because they had been beaten, flogged, and thrown into the inner cell. They were in prison because they had been fastened in stocks, locked in chains, and surrounded by darkness. But they did not let their prison stop their joy, my child. They let their joy stop their prison. They did not let their pain make them complain, moan, or groan. They let their pain make them rejoice, praise, and worship. They did not let their chains make them bitter, resentful, or angry. They let their chains make them grateful, forgiving, and loving. They did not let their darkness make them fearful, hopeless, or depressed. They let their darkness make them faithful, hopeful, and joyful. They rejoiced in me, my child. They rejoiced in me with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. They rejoiced in me with their words, their songs, and their prayers. They rejoiced in me with their faith, their love, and their gratitude. They remembered my goodness, my faithfulness, and my promises, my child. They remembered how I had called them, saved them, and used them. They remembered how I had guided them, protected them, and blessed them. They remembered how I had loved them, forgiven them, and empowered them. They declared my love, my power, and my glory, my child. They declared that I am their Lord and Savior, their master and friend, their teacher and guide. They declared that I am their creator, their provider, their father, their friend. They declared that I am their healer, their deliverer, their defender, their shield. They sang my praises, my worship, and my thanksgiving, my child. They sang songs of joy and peace, of hope and grace, of mercy and truth. They sang songs of victory and triumph, of freedom and liberty, of glory and honor. They sang songs of love and devotion, of commitment and dedication, of service and ministry. They sang a song like this, my child. We praise you, O Lord, for you are good. Your love endures forever. We thank you, O Lord, for you are great. Your power is unlimited. We worship you, O Lord, for you are holy. Your glory fills the earth. We adore you, O Lord, for you are worthy. Your name is above all names. You have called us, O Lord, to be your children. You have chosen us to be your own. You have saved us, O Lord, by your grace. You have forgiven us by your blood. You have guided us, O Lord, by your spirit. You have led us by your word. You have protected us, O Lord, by your power. You have shielded us by your hand. You have blessed us, O Lord, with every good thing. You have given us all that we need. You have loved us, O Lord, with an everlasting love. You have shown us your faithfulness. We rejoice in you, O Lord, in all circumstances. We are content in whatever we have. We trust in you, O Lord, in all situations. We are confident in whatever we face. We praise you, O Lord, for you are good. Your love endures forever. We thank you, O Lord, for you are great. Your power is unlimited. We worship you, O Lord, for you are holy. Your glory fills the earth. We adore you, O Lord, for you are worthy. Your name is above all names. They sang this song, my child, at midnight. They sang this song, my child, in prison. They sang this song, my child, in chains. They sang this song, my child, in darkness. And I heard their song my child. I heard their song and I was pleased. I heard their song and I was moved. 
I heard their song and I was glorified. And I responded to their song, my child. I responded to their song with a miracle. I responded to their song with a deliverance. I responded to their song with a victory. I sent an earthquake, my child. I sent an earthquake that shook the foundations of the prison. I sent an earthquake that opened the doors of the cells. I sent an earthquake that loosened the chains of the prisoners. I set them free, my child. I set them free from their prison, their chains, and their darkness. I set them free from their pain, their fear, and their despair. I set them free from their enemies, their accusers, and their oppressors. I saved them, my child. I saved them from death, from harm, and from danger. I saved them from wrath, from judgment, and from condemnation. I saved them from sin, from guilt, and from shame. I used them, my child. I used them to witness, to preach, and to teach. I used them to heal, to deliver, and to bless. I used them to plant, to water, and to grow. I used them to save the jailer, my child. The jailer who was about to kill himself. The jailer who asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16 verse 30 The jailer who believed in me and was baptized with his household. The jailer who washed their wounds and welcomed them into his home. The jailer who rejoiced with his family and became a member of the church. I honored them, my child. I honored them with favor, with grace, and with glory. I honored them with joy, with peace, and with love. I honored them with praise, with worship, and with thanksgiving. Paul and Silas are examples for you, my child. They show you what it means to be joyful. They show you what it means to rejoice in me, in yourself, and in your life. They show you what it means to rejoice in my presence, in your identity, and in your purpose. They show you what it means to rejoice in my grace, my power, and my glory. I want you to follow in their footsteps, my child. I want you to be joyful with yourself, with others, and with me. I want you to be joyful with your life, your circumstances, and your destiny. I want you to be joyful with your past, your present, and your future. Will you be joyful, my child? Will you rejoice in me with your whole heart? Will you rejoice in me with your whole soul? Will you rejoice in me with your whole spirit? If you will, then you will open your heart to my abundance and my favor. You will receive, share, and multiply my blessings in your life. You will experience the fullness of my joy and my peace. You will embrace my abundance in your life. Follow this prayer if you choose to open your heart to me. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your blessings and your favor. Thank you for your presence and your joy. I confess that you are my Lord and my Savior. I confess that you are my Creator and my Provider. I confess that you are my Father and my Friend. I believe that you have a plan and a purpose for my life. I believe that you have a promise and a destiny for my life. I believe that you have abundance and favor for my life. I receive your abundance and your favor in my life. I receive your grace and your mercy in my life. I receive your joy and your peace in my life. I share your abundance and your favor with others. I share your grace and your mercy with others. I share your joy and your peace with others. I multiply your abundance and your favor in my life. I multiply your grace and your mercy in my life. I multiply your joy and your peace in my life. I praise you and worship you for who you are. 
I thank you and acknowledge you for what you have done. I love you and serve you with all that I am. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My beloved child, I have heard your prayer. And your voice makes me happy. Whenever you face any obstacles or facing any lacking, I want you to come back and hear my voice and pray to me once more. I promise you your days will be brightened after hearing my words. I love you. Amen.